So the dedicate remains an invaluable first century witness to non polyan Christology. It is the very earliest witness to the Christian understanding of Jesus outside of the New Testament and even predates New Testament books such as to Peter. The primitive form of the Christian message attributed to the Twelve Apostles preserves a form of Christianity quite different to that uh, which became dominant in later centuries and became known as Orthodoxy Christology. History discloses to us the reality of many Christianities in plural. Greetings, good evening everyone and welcome back to Blogging Tawheed. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and share with your friends and circles. Please share this continuous da'wah of Tawheed that is the core and the essence of submitting to the Creator. In the first episode of the Dedeke, I mentioned that there are explicit references to Jesus as a servant of God. This low Christology document became problematic for the Church Fathers who considered the Dedeke not authoritative nor sacred. Jesus' status is equivalent to that of the ancient Hebrew prophets without calling Him divine. Jesus is God's chosen one for the Israelites yet fully human and not divine in the Dedeke. There is no indication whatsoever of the deity of Jesus by the writers of the Dedeke. Nowhere in this very early first century work do we consider the Pauline ideas of atonement and redemption through Jesus' sacrificial death, nor do we encounter the Johannine ideas of the eternal Logos. The Dedeke is, no doubt, a priceless evidence of an undeveloped Christology characteristic of the early Jewish Christians, which contrasts the highly evolved Christ mysticism of Paul and John. And it is very important to note that Jesus' death and resurrection is not mentioned in the Dedeke at all. This is yet again another evidence that the Dedeke community serves to underscore even further the low Christology within this community. What matters about Jesus are his teachings and example. This informs us that this community, like early Christian communities, did not consider Jesus anything other than a prophet, a teacher, and a servant of God. Of course, by the end of the second century, Paul's Christology became dominant in the emerging Catholic Church, and Jewish ideas about Jesus were rejected in favor of exclusively Gentile ideas of a dying and rising Savior God. So similar to soteriological patterns, ubiquitous in the pagan world. In other words, the emerging Jesus cult resembled in many ways the pagan cults of the Roman Empire. The puzzle that no one has been able to solve remains who's behind the Dedeke? Is it one author or too many? And when was the Dedeke written? So from the title, the Dedeke indicates to mean the teaching, later changed to the teaching of the Twelve Apostles, and then changed again to the teaching of the Lord through the Twelve Apostles. And yet they did it again and changed it to the teaching of the Lord through the Twelve Apostles to the Gentiles. Regardless, these titles do not claim or indicate the book was actually written by the Apostles, but it simply conveys what their teachings might have been. It is therefore anonymous rather than pseudonymous. This discovery has caused a stir since it was found by the Metropolitan Philotheus Brenius in 1873 and published by him 10 years later in 1883. The Dedeke was immediately seen as to have been one of the most important literary remains of early Christianity outside of the New Testament.
Some scholars immediately recognized the antiquity of the account, dating it to the first century. Some others dated the document before even some of the books of the New Testament were written. Almost everyone realized that here at last was a book that achieved near canonical status in some early Christian circles known by title from discussions of the church fathers but for the most part lost to history sometime after the fourth century. However, most scholars agree that the Dedicate was written in stages and later compiled into one document. Dating the Dedicate varies widely, which makes it very problematic, and that's why dating this individual fragments has proven difficult, if not impossible. The broad scholarly consensus is that the Dedicate's final form was probably compiled in the late 2nd century. This is important because it shows us that there were many different forms of Christianity from a very historical moment. It didn't adhere to the 4th century orthodoxy as outlined by the Council of Nicaea. This may be one of the reasons why the Dedicate was left out of the New Testament canon. In addition, the material it shares with Matthew may have been made it redundant, and it may have seemed more Jewish than some 4th century Christians wanted. I would like here to share with you what Jonathan Draper writes. He's a priest and theologian. He says, and I quote, since it was discovered in a monastery in Constantinople and published by uh, Philotheus Brenius in 1883, the Dedicate or the teaching of the Twelve Apostles has continued to be one of the most disputed early Christian texts. It has been depicted by scholars as anything between the original of the Apostolic Decree, 50 AD, and a late archaizing fiction of the early 3rd century. End of quote. Jonathan Draper gives the date of 100 AD, which is only a little after that, and sometimes given for the book of Revelation, the Apocalypse. Also, I would like to share with you what the authoritative Oxford Dictionary of the Christian Church, uh, Oxford University Press, states. I quote, The author, date, and place of origin are unknown. The work is quoted as scripture by Clement of Alexandria and is mentioned by Eusebius of Caesarea and by Athanasius, although in the past many English and American scholars, J. A. Robinson, R. H. Conley, tended to assign it to the late 2nd century. Most scholars nowadays, including J. P. Audit, uh, O. P., who dates it 60 AD, page 479, end of quote. So the Dedicate remains an invaluable first century witness to non polyan Christology. It is the very earliest witness to the Christian understanding of Jesus outside of the New Testament, and even predates New Testament books such as to Peter. The primitive form of the Christian message attributed to the Twelve Apostles preserves a form of Christianity quite different to that uh, which became dominant in later centuries and became known as Orthodoxy Christology. History discloses to us the reality of many Christianities in plural, with different understandings of God, Jesus, and salvation. There never was a single Christianity going back to the golden days of the apostles. Diversity, disagreement, and schism were characteristic features of this religion from the very beginning. We have potentially two early writings outside Pauline Christianity that have no focus on death and resurrection. So how can one triumphantly declare 
earliest Christians closest to Jesus believed in Jesus' death and resurrection, when you have no writings from them, and the few scraps we have paint a different picture. Christianity was not uniform during this time, and this isn't even talking about the Dark Ages with no writings at all for the first century. It's, to me, it's ridiculous that anyone can declare what Jesus did or did not teach when you radically have different viewpoints forming early on. Furthermore, the Didache proves to be from an early date, which shows that it has differences from Paul and John. And it's puzzling to me then that the teaching of the apostles are disregarded while the teachings of Paul are worshipped. Was Paul an apostle? Was Paul one of the original twelves? If we consider Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John as the four apostles, even though they are not and we don't know who they are, we add Peter, James, and Jude. That's seven, right? So, where are the other apostles? Why don't we have some writings from all the twelve? What about Bartholomew? Andrew, weren't the apostles, disciples? How did so much of Paul's writings ever got to be in the New Testament and dominate so much of it if he was never one of the twelve? <laughs>